Hi, in this particular video, we're going to be looking at working with just straightforward fractions, adding and subtracting. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. If you any problems, add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. OK, so in this worksheet, we're going to be working through just adding and subtracting fractions. So with adding and subtracting, we've got to make sure that the denominator is the same. So in this particular case, I've got 20 and 10. I'm going to make them both over 20. So with the second one, because it was over 10, if I multiply that by 2, I got 20. But it also means I've got to multiply the top by 2. And when I add those two together, I'm going to get 9 over 20, which is the answer to this particular question. OK, let's have a look then at the next one, which is going to be 4 fifths minus 7 over 10. Well, we're going to use exactly the same strategy. We've got to make sure that the denominator is the same in both cases. So we're OK with the second one, which is 7 over 10. With the first one, I've actually multiplied it by 2, so it becomes 8 over 10 minus 7 over 10, which is 1 over 10. OK, let's have a look then at question number 3. So question number 3, again, I've got to choose the same denominator. It's going to be a 20. So 1 over 20, I'm perfectly fine with. This is going to be 20 now. So 5 times 4 is 20. So therefore, I multiply the top by 4 as well. So that becomes 12. Add those two together, I'm going to get 13 over 20. So hopefully you're getting the idea of how to kind of work through these. Please do stop the video, have a go at the questions yourself. OK, so on number four, I'm going to make them both 16. Well, the second one is OK. I can leave that as it is. The first one, I've doubled it. So therefore, I'm going to make that 14 over 16 minus 3 over 16 is going to give us 11 over 16. OK, let's have a look at the final question on this side, which is 1 over 5 plus 3 over 4. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to make the denominator to be both 20 because both 5 and 4 will divide into 20. 5 will go into 20 four times, so that becomes 4 times 1 is 4. 4 will go into 20 five times, so 5 times 3 is going to be 15, so that's going to give me an answer of 19 over 20. OK, let's move on then to side 2 of this particular a series where it's just a little bit more practice of the same sort of thing. OK, so on this one, I'm going to make it again over 20, but this time it's going to be a subtraction. So 5 will go into 20 four times. So 4 times 4 is 16. 4 will go into 25 times. So 5 times 1 is 5. So 16 minus 5 is going to give us 11 over 20. OK, number 7. Um, I'm going to choose 12. 12 is perfectly fine for me. Now, you've, it's always a good practice to use the lowest number that you can actually get. It's called the lowest common multiple. In this particular case, I've chosen 12. I could, if I wanted to, choose 24 or 36 or something like that. But at the moment, 12 makes it much easier for me because now I'm in a position where I've got 10 over 12 as my answer. But actually, I can reduce that and simplify that a little bit more to 5 over 6. Now, in these series of questions here, it doesn't ask you to simplify any further. You don't need to really worry too much about it. But later on in this worksheet, uh, we do when we get extra marks for doing that. OK, let's have a look at number 8. So number 8, uh, in this particular case, I'm going to choose quite a big number is going to be 120, which just makes my life a little bit harder because we're bigger numbers to work with. But actually, it's not too bad because then I get 78 out of 120. Now, actually, with those, I can divide top and bottom by 2 if I want to. And again, it's not asking me to do this, but if I want to, I can. That will bring it to 39 over 60. And then again, I can divide top and bottom if I want to by 3, and that will give me 13 um, divided by um, 20. OK, so that'll give me 13 over 20 as my final answer. All right, let's have a look then at number 9. So number 9, fairly straightforward. I'm going to make both of those 90. OK, and th this is the way I normally write it out. I actually write the denominator first. So that's 20 over 90. In this particular case, 27 over 90 is going to give me 
47 over 90 and I can't simplify that any further. OK, let's have a look then at the final one on the second sheet is going to be a denominator now of 84. And again, fairly straightforward. 7 goes into 84 uh, 12 times. So 12 times 6 is going to be 72. It's just bigger numbers to deal with, really. 12 goes into 84 7 times. So 7 times 5 is 35. Take one away from the other, I get 37 over 84, and I can't divide that any further. OK, so let's move on then to um, slightly trickier questions, because now we're dealing with um, mixed numbers. But essentially, the same principle holds true. Now, the way I would generally tend to do it, I do see some students where they will convert these all to top-heavy fractions. I don't personally. What I do is I rewrite it with the same denominator because then it makes my working just a little bit easier okay and that will then give me 1 plus 2 is 3 holes and then 9 over 20 and that would be the answer to question number 11 okay question number 12 um, is going to be written in pretty much the same way and this time I'm going to make the denominator 10 so that's going to be uh, 7 over 10 is OK for the second one. The first one is going to be 8 over 10. So take one away from the other. I'm going to get two holes and one tenth. OK, number 13. Again, very, very similar principles all the ways with these. I always tend to try to make sure that you've got uh, a very consistent way of working through each of these types of questions so and it should apply itself and should be you should be able to use the same principle in all the questions that you come across so that would give me 11 13 over 20. okay number 14 then give your answer as a mixed number well there's a good clue there these are usually two mark questions maybe there should be a little bit more but they are usually two marks on these types okay so again i'm going to choose my denominator and i'm going to make that 16 minus 1 and something over 16. Well, 3 is OK. I can leave that. With the first one, it's going to be now 14 over 16. So 3 take away 1 is going to be 2 holes. And then 14 take away 3 is going to be 11 sixteenths. All right, let's have a look at number 15 here. Give your answer as a mixed number. Well, again, I'm going to use exactly the same principle as I've done before. And I'm just going to write everything over 20. So 1 fifth is going to give us 4 over 20. And 3 quarters is going to give us 15 over 20. Which when I add everything together, I get 8 holes and then 19 over 20. OK, so hopefully that's all right for you. The final page on this video is going to be, or this particular worksheet, it's going to be where it just goes up a little bit to three marks. Now, these do take a bit of a jump up. OK, now, however, I'm going to use the same principles. I'm going to rewrite them as over the same denominator. OK, now where I see students um, not getting these two correct is because they use these top heavy fractions and it becomes quite a lot of big numbers to deal with. So this particular method will make it just a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. So I can rewrite all of that and then add it up as I've done before, which is going to give us three. But this time is going to give us 31 twentieths. OK, now it's not in its simplest form. You've actually got a whole number and a top heavy fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 20 twentieths away from 31 twentieths and that's going to give me another whole and then what I'm left with is going to be 11 twentieths. Now hopefully you can see that okay. This um, is this really is the same as saying um, 3 plus um, 20 over 20 plus 11 over 20 and that will give me 4 and 11 twentieths. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on then to number 17. So number 17, again, I'm going to write in exactly the same way. And this time I'm going to choose uh, 20. OK, uh, a few like lines lying around over here, but basically it will give us um, 3 and 8 over 20 minus 1 and 15 over 20. OK, now if I take one away from the other, my problem is, is that 3 take away 1 is perfectly fine for me. However, my problem is going to be the fraction. So 8 
over 20 takeaway, 15 over 20 is not going to work for me. So I'm going to pull a bit of a sneaky trick here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this 3 and 8 twentieths to 2 and 28 twentieths. So I'm going to go back again the way I was before. Um, so if you can imagine, that 3 is the same as saying 2 holes and then 20 twentieths. Okay. And then, therefore, I've also added the 8 twentieths, and that's going to give me 2 and 28 twentieths. So that makes it now much, much easier for me to take away the fractions and also the whole numbers. And this is a technique. I don't think it's as popular as it used to be, but I've always found it a very good easy to use technique providing you remember to make sure that you change that whole to a fraction and give yourself the ability to take the fractions away. Okay, let's have a look then at number 18. Um, this one is not too bad. Um, so this is going to give me a denominator of 24. So that's going to be 22 over 24 plus 2 and over 24 and that time it's going to give me 9 over 24. Okay, so that's going to give me 4 holes and then 31 over 24 and again I need to borrow 24 24 so that's going to give me 5 and then I've got 7 24th as my final answer. Okay, let's have a look then at number 19. So number 19, again, in its simplest form, well, uh, the problem is I've got here is I've got a big number in the denominator. I'm going to make that 3 and 120 minus 1 and 120. So 12 goes into 120 10 times, so that's going to be 90. And 10 goes into 120 12 times, so that's going to be 12. So what I'm going to be left with is 2 and 78 120. Now, that's not in its simplest form, because what I can do is work through this to give myself the ability to get through to 2 and 13 twentieths, which is the answer to question number 19. OK, final question then is going to be question number 20. Uh, question number 20, um, again, I've got big numbers to deal with. Well, actually, I've got 90 to deal with, so I'm going to make that 5 and something over 90 plus 2 and something over 90. OK, so uh, 9 goes into 90 10 times. That's going to be 80. Oops, sorry about that. 80. OK, that's not very good, is it? And then 10 is going to go into 99 times. That's going to be 81. OK, so um, I'm going to add these two together. That's going to give me 7 and then a big 161 over 90. Well, again, I'm going to borrow 90 ninetieths. I'm going to make that then 8. OK, and then I've got 71 out of 90 left. And that's the answer to this particular question. Hi, I hope the video has been useful. Please do add a comment if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.